Hey, I'm Ed Bolian from Vinwicky, and we are back with another top 10 collector cars of a decade. Today we're talking about the 1990s. I'm here in downtown Miami at Curated with John Tamari. And thank you as always, sir. Thank Glad you to have again you. for being here. We're going to have a lot of fun filming some stuff this week in Miami, but it doesn't get much more curated than 90s supercars these days. And so today we're going to compile our list of what we think are the top 10 collector cars of that decade, meaning the most iconic, the most likely to appear in, you know, just the consummate criterion collection of the cars that define the 1990s. Now, clearly we're going to have a supercar bend, but it really was an explosion in the production and the perception and the way that people drove and appreciated supercars. And so I don't think you can start 90s cars without talking about the McLaren F1. Not at all. I mean, it, it's a car that to this day is in many people's, you know, list is considered the greatest of all time. Obviously, you're, you're, you're on that list as I well. I am on that list. And, and I think, again, the numbers and the facts around that car, manufacturers still today use that as, as a baseline. Because it was so many uh, things. It was the speed, it was the center seat, it was the ties to racing, it was the limited production, it was the singular focus of Gordon Murray. There are so many things that make it great, and those are now considered how you start to make a new car great. 100%. I mean, 106 cars today, give or take $20 million. It's one of those cars that, you know, especially if you aspired to have one of the top tier versions, say a GT or an LM, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you probably just cannot buy one. Yes. And we'll explore other cars at some point that are those cars that you can't buy regardless of how much money you try to throw at the problem. <laughs> but I think the F1 is the 90s in supercars. But so was a Diablo. And listen, though, Di Diablo was the world's fastest production car for many years. It's one of the first cars uh, from Italy to break 200 miles per hour. And I think you know, you, you look back at that time, I mean, at first, I think people were shocked that Diablo as the successor to the Countach sure. was a little bit of a letdown, but the Diablo stood the test of time. I can't tell you how many people today, you know, tell me stories about the first time they saw a Diablo, that presence. And I just think all of the Diablo variants are incredible. And really it is the ultimate in my eyes that, that V12, supercar normally aspirated it just does everything right and again it's a usable car so you could go out and drive a diablo if you wanted to especially one of the later cars i don't have to tell you how much of a fan i am of the that's, lamborghini diablo that's right now if you're looking for your next 90s dream car i'd love for you to head over to our sponsor auto tempest to search for it autotempest.com gives you all the cars from all the sites in one place in one search we love them for their years and years of support of VinWiki, allowing us to make content like that. And honestly, because it's where I find the cars that I'm searching for every day. They pop up through dealer websites at different rates, different days. And the earlier you can find it, the better and more shrewd you can be in your negotiation. So check them out now at the link in the description below to thank them for their support of VinWiki and find your next car. I think it's also a time where you'd have to have a Porsche in the collection. There's a lot of great options, but I think it's going to be a 993 variant. It could be a Turbo S. It could be a GT or a GT2-ish thing, they'd call it, or, of course, a GT1. And, and I think, again, to me, it goes back to reading, you know, Road and Track or Automobile Magazine, kills bug, bugs fast, <laughs> the Arena Red, 993 Turbo, that was it for me. And I think there's so many people that those, especially their marketing ideas at the time, have forever made an impact. And these are all cars that are not the kind of thing that you might want to just cycle through and own for a year. These are forever cars that people are buying I today agree. with the intention to I have agree. them decades from now. Yes. And certainly that would also apply to a Ferrari F50. I don't think you can say 90s without that. When we talked about the 80s cars, we talked about the 288 and the F40. Of the supercar range, everybody's got a different favorite. Mine is certainly an F50. The yellow one that you've got downstairs <laughs> is as good as it gets. I do wish they would have just not curved the darn dashboard out so my knees don't fit in the car. But, you know, hey, it is, uh, it's so good. 349 cars, to me, just peak Ferrari supercar. I, I agree, and I think the biggest statement to that is it really is truly, with the exception of the AMG Project 1, the only road car that was that someone fitted a actual Formula One engine in. So I think, again, it, it will forever stand the test of time, and it's just, it's perfect. It is, <laughs> it is. Now, a car that no one would say is perfect, but everyone would agree belongs on this list, is a Bugatti EB110. 
I love the appreciation that these cars have seen over the last five years. I think they represent so much for Bugatti <laughs> as a moment in time. Of course. Maybe not their high, highest point as a car company, but I know you've transacted a ton of them. They can be finicky, they can be troublesome, but they are always awesome. And I think most importantly, again, it's, a, it's this 1990s sentiment of making a statement. And you know, when you think of the EB110, Artioli went out and, and formed this new company, built this insane facility, and, and put together the greatest engineers and designers from you know, Motor Valley and said, we're gonna build a quad turbo V12 carbon fiber monocoque that's also gonna be luxurious. I mean, it's such a statement piece. It's such an exciting car. Numerous records until the McLaren F1, but it, it definitely it's a must for a 1990s collection. Yeah, we're sending the dream team to play basketball in Paris this year, but that was the dream team <laughs> yes. of automotive yes. personalities Agreed. coming Agreed. together to build something super Agreed. duper special. Agreed. Now, one thing, you know, people talk now about the most beautiful cars of all time. And while I think a Diablo, an F1, an EB110 are iconic and cool, I wouldn't always call them beautiful. Agreed. But I think the most beautiful car of the 90s has to be the XJ220. And, and I would say it is, and it's just, it, it's so stunning to see it in person. It's such mm. a big car, but also at the same time, it's a car that did, again, break records. It was meant to go you know, very fast. It, it held the uh, Nürburgring uh, lap record for many, many years as a production car. Unfortunately, it was just, you know, just filled with just, you know, these, these infamous stories of the V6 twin turbo, not the V12 and people wanting their deposits back. So it's, it's definitely plagued with, with these stories, but it is a piece of the 90s. It is a must for a 1990s collection. 100%. And all of these cars lived in many moments where people just didn't care about them for the history they represent. Of course. They care about them now because of that, but they were just buying the newer, latest, greatest, coolest, biggest, <laughs> baddest thing. And these cars just got swept under the rug. Yes, and so agreed. I think that's a big part of it. Now, we love the Vector 8 in the 80s. I love a Vector M12 in the 90s. I, you know what? I did a video years ago where I talked about it was one of the worst cars <laughs> I've ever driven. But in so, in so many ways, it's one of the wildest and coolest. It's something that you don't want to own, but you have to. It made such a statement, the Lamborghini engine, the turmoil of Vector, and just so wacky and so cool. For sure. Now, the other thing that the 90s brought in were supercars you could actually drive. And there is no greater example throughout history of a supercar that you could daily than an Acura NSX. Certainly an NSXR is kind of the halo there, yes. but I think they are all so great. I've never seen a community of car owners and enthusiasts that is more vibrant, more active, more honest and authentic than the NSX guys. I got to speak at NSXpo this year, the owners gathering in the US, and they are all wonderful. I love an NSX, other than the fact that I don't fit. Common theme amongst 90s cars, but <laughs> I think it just doesn't get really any better as a forever only supercar you could own. I agree, and, and I think if you haven't, you need to go to YouTube right now to watch the Ayrton Senna video of him driving an NSX at its limits. Um, you know, he was involved in the original testing of the cars, development of the cars. You've got Pininfarina involved in the design. It's just so good. It's so good and it does everything right and it's usable. It stands the test of time as good as it gets. Another one that you gotta love is a Viper. The 90s saw the reveal of the Viper. So cool. Carol Shelby's involvement. The Gen 2, blue with white stripes, it's hard to get much cooler than that at any price point for any car. Reliable enough, drivable enough, brutal, but also just you know approachable in some ways. People are daily, daily driving these cars, and they should be because they're wonderful. My guilty pleasure is to look at Viper Classifieds and dream about owning a Viper. I wanted one so bad as a kid. I thought it was the coolest car. I've never actually pulled the trigger on one personally, <laughs> but they're still, you know, decently uh, affordable in yes, some ways. Absolutely. You know, relative. They're super cool. They're such a, a period piece. You know, I had the 118th model of all the variations, and and I just one day I'm gonna buy a Viper. You have to. Yeah, have, to. have to. Absolutely. Now, the one that I put in to round out the top 10 is the R34 GTR. I think it's just as iconic as a car could be today of the 90s period, really kind of crept into the 2000s in Too Fast, Too Furious when it was really introduced to America. The ties to Paul Walker, the Motor X scandals, everything about it to me is just perfect, iconic. The struggles that people had trying to define them as rare because they're the right shade of purple. I think just the struggle that we've had for the last 10, 15 years of trying to get these 90s cars that we were never allowed to have, 
in that forbidden fruit, it doesn't get much better than a skyline. I agree, and and for me, it wasn't necessarily the Fast and Furious series, it was Gran Turismo. Sure. That first introduced me to the cars and, and really built an appreciation. Same with the Dodge Viper and, and the NSX. You know, I think so video games mm -hmm. play a very, very important part for the 1990s. And I think now it's just exploded even more. But, but again, uh, the video game generation, I think, will continue to dictate the future of collecting in so many ways. Absolutely. So that's my top 10 or our top 10 as we've discussed it through. And I, I've got to say, there's never been more bubble cars for a decade than if you think about the, the 90s. Certainly a 355, whether it's a challenge car that's now road legal or a Fiorano or just a rock spec yellow spider to blast yes. from San Francisco. Yes. It's hard to top that. Yes, A agreed. Mazda RX-7, a Toyota of Supra. Of course. The great C4 Corvettes, whether it's a ZR1 or a Callaway, I, I just, I think those are all so 90s, so awesome. Agreed. A 964, bad agreed. boy spec, an yes. RS brought yes. into the US, all wonderful. A Hummer H1. I mean, it, it, we don't have so many amazing cars today in that segment, even beyond that segment, without what that car is. The Agreed. values have reflected Agreed. it. And I mean, whether or not it really even just counts due to the low volume of a CLK GTR. Yeah. I think yeah. a CLK GTR may one day pass an F1 in terms of value, just based on the rarity, based on the, possible. the way yeah, we think about possible. it. Another great Gran Turismo car. And you're right, just the, the impact that popular culture had on the 90s in all ways of life, but certainly in the cars that we love, will never be denied. So let us know which 90 cars we missed. I know there's plenty out there. They're all awesome. And whatever you're doing, if you're voting with your pocketbook or just voting online, we love your opinions.